of thine oath, which thou hast made us to swear, verse 21, in verse 21, and she said, according unto your word, so be it. Look at that. She didn't say, no, I don't accept that condition. I don't accept those terms. Let me give you my own opinion. When you come to the kingdom of God, what the Lord has laid down, the terms and the condition of remaining in the kingdom, abiding in, in the kingdom. That's the condition you stay by. You don't uh, push the doctrine of the Bible aside. Put all the conditions of security aside and then bring your own condition. I believed on the Lord forever and forever. I am saved. Even if I go back to sin, even if I backslide, I am still saved. No, you don't bring your own condition. She said, according unto your words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed, and she bound, immediately she bound the scarlet line on in the window. Now the condition, and we're going to abide by the condition of the Lord in Jesus' name. When I say the blood, I will pass over you. But if you come out of, under the security of the blood of the Lamb, the salvation will not remain. We're coming to you. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Hebrews 10, verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. We believed and we came into life eternal by faith. We continue in that same faith in Christ so that as we're justified, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Verse 39. In verse 39, but we're not of them who draw back carelessly, who draw back deliberately, who draw back erroneously, who draw back because of false doctrine, because of false idea. I am special. Even if I draw back, I'm still all right. Even if I continue in secret sin, I will still get to heaven. They draw back because of self-deception. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we're not of them who draw back unto perdition. Amen? Amen. But of them that believe unto the saving of the soul. We're coming to number three now. Number three is the expanding fruitfulness by devotion to the covenant of peace. What she did eventually when they came, when the Israelites came and the Jericho walls fell down, she was in the place where the spies left her. She remained in the place where the spies left her. And the scarlet court was there. And the father, the mother, the brothers, the sisters, all they had, they were all inside. The Lord, after saving us, brings us into the kingdom. He wants us to remain. He wants us to abide where he has put us. And not stray away and not go away from the cover from the wings under the wings of the shadow of the Almighty. He wants us to abide that there lies our refuge. I pray we will not leave the place where the Lord has put us in Jesus' name. It tells us in Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37, we're reading from verse 26. Ezekiel 37, 26. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. The Lord wants us to abide in peace. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, but I give my peace unto you. And then the God of peace sanctifies us fully body, spirit, soul, and spirit, because he is faithful, and what he has promised, he will do. And as we abide in that peace, perfect peace, he makes our heart to abide and remain with him. And when the peace, the prince of peace shall come, because he's the only one that can bring peace on earth, 
while he's away now, there's no peace. And he even said, don't you think I come to bring peace? I come to bring division between those who believe in the family and those who do not believe. But when he comes, then he brings that peace. There'll be a reign of a thousand years in the perfect peace of the Lord. And then after that, we'll continue in heaven, in peace forever and ever and ever in Jesus' name. I will be there. I will be there if, after being saved, you're sanctified, and you follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's bring everything we've heard, everything we've learned unto the Lord in prayer. He saves. His grace saves. Our faith in him saves. Are you saved? Rehab the Hallows was saved, but she did not continue in that fleshly, adulterous, fornicating lifestyle after that salvation. Are you saved? Do you believe the judgment of God coming? She believed. She knew judgment was coming on our country, on our community. She had that conviction. That's what brought the faith. She made the confession in deep faith. Do you really have conviction? The judgment is coming. Do you have conviction? That the only way to escape is to truly, consciously, honestly, transparently repent and believe that there's no salvation in any other but only in Christ, our Savior, the final sacrifice, the acceptable sacrifice unto the Father. Faith that does not look in any other direction for salvation. Rahab did not look in any other direction. Her people had their tradition. She didn't look direction, the direction of tradition. As a professional harlot, She knew how to catch men. She had gathered some experience in luring men into that kind of abominable behavior. But when those spies came, and she knew this is my chance for salvation, she was cleansed of all that carnal, fleshly wisdom. And didn't propose anything to those men. She was clear, caught, saved, really converted, really transformed. Is your salvation like that? Are you saved? Clear, clean, undebatable? Are you on the borderline, swaying here and there? And if the wind of temptation is too strong, you fall into the ditch. Make your way right with God. When you confess, you confess with the purpose of forsaking. Forsaking totally, fully, completely. No shade or shadow or appearance of the abominable past. She's separated from her countrymen. She dropped loyalty to her pagan country. 
Now she was going to be loyal to the God of heaven and earth. And there's no doubt about her faith, about her conversion. Eventually, she was brought in into the fellowship of the family of Israel and even got married. If she had been of double character, living like her past life, of abominable filthiness, and then sometimes behaving like an Israelite, <clears throat> if she had been of double character, she would not have been married in Israel. To the point she became an ancestress of Jesus Christ in the lineage of the people through who Jesus came into the world. That shows very clearly a conversion. Is your conversion so clear? Have you dropped the superfluity of naughtiness, the stubbornness, the stony heart? Has that been taken away? Has the God of heaven sprinkled that clean water upon you? And you free, clean, as white as snow, whiter than snow. Are you a new creature in Christ? Does the Spirit of God, who knows all secrets, does he bear witness with your heart? You're saved. You're clean. You're white. You're white and snow. No hidden secret sin. You stand by conviction. You live above reproach. Are you at peace in your heart? Are you holy in your heart? Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Think about eternity. Think about escaping the judgment that will come upon all people that remain in their sins. As you go back home, continue in prayer. Be sure beyond any shadow of doubt that all sins, filthiness, superfluity of naughtiness, stony heart, stubborn behavior, stiff neck, be sure beyond any shadow of doubt, everything is cleansed away. From your life, waiting, ready for the coming of the Lord. Our Father, we thank you for the exposure and the exposition of your word. We pray, Lord, you write your word on the tables of our hearts in Jesus' name. We're asking you to show mercy, your manifest grace. And you grant us this gift of real, practical, life-changing, heart-transforming faith that our lives will not remain the way we were in the past in Jesus' name. That you granted Rahab true conversion, genuine conversion, real regeneration. Lord, we pray 
our experiences in Christ for conversion, for salvation, for righteousness will be real beyond any shadow of doubt in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, as you bring us and place us in your kingdom, the grace to continue in your grace, the faith to continue in, your, in the faith, grant to everyone in Jesus' name. You have told us already that because iniquity shall abound, the love of many, but not of all, the love of many will wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Help us to endure unto the end. Times of temptation, times of trial, we will not fall in Jesus' name. We pray that the old habit, the old temper, the old disposition, the old anger, the old filthiness will not come back into our lives anymore in Jesus' name. You have cleansed us, help us to remain clean. You purified us, help us to remain pure. Help us to be always expecting the coming of the Lord and to be ready anytime the Lord will come. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I pray that the word that we have here this evening we mix with faith in our hearts and make our faith be happy in Jesus' name. So we have a couple of announcements that I would like to talk about. This week is a special week for us and uh, is outreach week. So there's a lot to partake in the vineyard of God this, this week. And it starts tomorrow. And uh, next tomorrow, Wednesday, tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday um, by 5.30 in the church uh, auditorium. So we are going to go out to uh, preach the gospel, to tell G people about Jesus. And uh, I know we are very excited to be part of this outreach. And I pray that we are first in Jesus' name. On Thursday, also the same outreach takes place by 6 p.m. But this does not substitute or nullify the seniors meeting that meets um, on 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 uh, on Thursday or on Wednesday because the seniors meet on Wednesday. So the Tuesday and Wednesday outreach does not nullify that. Thursday is 6 p.m. the same outreach, and there is an opportunity for us to be part of the harvest that Jesus Christ talked about. I pray that all we are in Jesus' name. On Friday also, we have 6.30, which is now a combined, it's a, it's a revival hour, and it's going to be of uh, words, hymns, and songs. So all the people that we have out to will come together on that same uh, Friday by 6.30, where we are going to worship God together. <clears throat> and it's going to be a time of revival. And I pray the Lord will help us to revive our hearts and help everyone to be revived in Jesus' name. By 2 p.m. also, there is also uh, the outreach continue by 2 p.m. I don't. I want, I want us to remember also that the convention stick, uh, will still take place, and uh, we are looking forward to it. And the Lord will help us at in Kingston, and going to give us safe trip to and fro. I'm going to be uh, encountered by the Lord in Jesus' name. So we still want to please uh, register for the convention. The link is on the chat box. You can just click it and register. Because I was actually thinking that it requires money to register before, but it doesn't require money. Just register within two minutes. You'll be done with registration. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. As we continue this evening, I want us to give our tithe and offering to the Lord. And anything we bring to the Lord, let's pray on it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for what you have provided for us. We out of this we give this token to for the for the work of the Lord and for the manifestation, the expansion of the kingdom. I pray Lord just where this where this token is coming from, Lord Jesus, bless it and expand it in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray Lord, increase us in all areas and let your name be exalted. God, I pray as we are bringing this token, accept our worship also in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. We can also bring our tithe and offering to church on Sunday. And uh, uh, you can give it to the usher when you get to church. You can also send it through Zell. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer as we close. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this Bible study. We give the glory because you have opened our hearts 
to what faith is and how Rehab has manifested its faith in other nations. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will help our faith to be active in Jesus' name. You will not just be faith that does not bring forth work. I pray that it will show forth in our life and be critical in Jesus' name. I pray mm -hmm. for Trish coming that this week outreach that will help us to be partaker of this harvest that is ripe in our community in Jesus' name. For God, I pray to be exalted of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We have to omit ourselves and share the grace together in count of two. One, two. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the love of God. Be with us now Amen. and forever. Amen. 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 Jesus name. Please remember the outreach the Lord will us in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you.